This is my dog, Thor. He kind of looks like a puppy, but he is actually eight years old, which means that he is roughly halfway through his average lifespan. I, on the other hand, I'm probably about a third of the way through mine. This math sucks. It just seems cruel, you know? Like, that our dogs live so much shorter lives than we do, and that we so often have to watch them go. Excited, Gail! <laughs> so, why do our dogs live so much shorter lives than we do? And is there anything that we can do about that? Turns out the answer is yes, or at least we can try. You've probably seen all of those headlines about various anti-aging efforts in people. Well, now there's a new one for dogs. One human year equals seven mm -hmm. years for dog years. Dog years. Dog years. I always heard that to figure out how old your dog was compared to you, you just multiplied the years they've been alive times seven, which would look like this. So at two, they're 14, a teenager. And at 10, they're 70, a distinguished gentleman. Turns out, not how this works. Vets call this the myth that never dies. They say it's not based on any research at all. It's based on basically humans kind of live to 70 and dogs kind of live to 10. So sure, fine, why not? But now there's a much more scientific way to compare your dog's age to yours. And that chart looks like this. I don't know why I assumed it had to be linear, but the fact that it's curved just blows my mind. This is based on research by a group of geneticists at UC San Diego. It's saying that your dog at one is equivalent to a person who's about 30, as opposed to seven. But at 14, your dog is only 70, as opposed to 98. In other words, that dogs as a species age faster than we do when they're young and slower when they're old. Or if you really want to freak yourself out, that we as humans age slower than they do when we're young, but faster when we're old. But what are they actually measuring here? Like what's happening inside of me versus Thor at different rates? Or in other words, how do you quantify aging? So that's actually one of the, the core goals of Loyal, to develop the most comprehensive quantified aging process. That's Celine Haliwa. She's the founder of Loyal, the company that's trying to better understand and hopefully slow aging in dogs. There's a lot that we still don't understand about aging, both in dogs and in humans. What we think right now is that there's a series of various types of cellular damage and that these accrue and accrue and then lead into the disease that you end up having the symptoms of when you're 60, 70, 80. Basically, that many of the diseases we die from spring in some way from underlying damage that happens as we get older. One way of measuring this is by looking at changes that happen to DNA. Oh, here's a cord. So if this is your DNA, you can have modifications on this and then change how it's shaped. So maybe it becomes shaped this way or it's shaped that way. These modifications are thought to change predictively with age. This aging clock is called methylation, and that's what's being measured on this chart. Researchers looked at DNA collected from Labradors over 16 years, and then compared them to DNA collected from humans between the ages of 1 and 103. This helps us get a better sense of what's going on beneath all of the age-related stuff that we can see. You know, the thinning hair, the wrinkles. Dogs do get wrinkles under there. But more importantly, the frailty, the cancer, the disease. And the more that we know, the more we can do about it. This chart is a key step there, but it was made using data from just labs. But what about other breeds? What if your dog isn't a lab? Dog breeds live shockingly different lengths of time. I mean, if you've ever had a very small or a very big dog, you know this. So it's a 2x variance. You know, a Great Dane might live six to eight years, while a Chihuahua can live, you know, 18 years plus. Big dogs generally live shorter lives than small dogs. I knew that, but I didn't realize how strong the correlation was. And it's our fault. It's such a large effect in dogs because we were selectively breeding, accidentally selectively breeding for the genetics that caused the dogs to have these, these growth issues. But it's important to study the difference that now exists because small dogs seem to be holding the key to longer doggy life.
Dogs on average are actually born in very similar sizes. These bigger dogs just grow metabolically at a much, much faster rate. It's thought that basically the things that make them grow very quickly and become so large when they're babies don't fully turn off after the dog is fully grown, which causes them to age at a faster rate and then die sooner on average. That's A, terrible, I love big dogs, but it's also very interesting from a biological perspective. This is the research area that Loyal is most focused on. They're trying to figure out not just what's going on inside of dogs, but what's different between dog breeds so that they can treat it. We're basically trying to make the metabolism, for a lack of a better word, of a big dog look more like that of a small dog. And it's not gonna go all the way, right? But maybe we can like walk it back to Australian Shepherd or something instead of a honk and Great Dane. Right now, they're still in the research phase, trying to figure out what specific areas can be targeted with what specific drugs. There isn't a pill that you can buy today that will help your dog live longer. Sorry. But they did ask for dog volunteers, so I sent in a little bit of Thor's DNA. Come here, Red. This one, Which I wasn't say, uh, thrilled about. Say, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put this in here. And I'm gonna shake it. Good boy. Good boy, you did that so good. My hope is that Thor can help future dogs spend more time with their people. Thor's hope is that he gets a treat. And Loyal's hope in all of this? My mission in Loyal and in life in general is to bring forward drugs that help dogs live longer, healthier lives. And while doing that, also learn more about aging and use that to hopefully one day help people too. Helping dogs to one day help humans. I mean, huge if true. Do I wish that there was a pill that I could buy right now to make Thor live 10 more years? Yes, I would buy that in a heartbeat. But this is what progress needs. Progress needs people who see the vision for where we're gonna go long before we get there. And that's always been a big goal for me in making Huge If True, to help you see that vision sooner. And in the meantime, even though there's no big anti-aging solution yet for dogs, that doesn't mean there's nothing that you can do to help your dog live longer. Here are five things that you really should make sure that you're doing to make sure that your dog can live the longest life. The time that we get with our dogs is just so precious. It's a real gift. And I want more of it. But making this video also helped me remember the most important part, which is that it's, it's amazing that our totally different lives overlapped at all. I'm so glad that that little guy and I are alive at the same time. Hi! Hi! Come here. And as much as I wish that he could live for my whole rest of my life, it's important to me to remember that for Thor's whole life, there will never be a day when I'm not there taking care of him. Thor! <laughs> okay, let's go play.